Are we we're good recording? Hello everybody and welcome today. Um, we have the pleasure of uh, having Justin Chan speaking to us about funding liquidity and capital. Uh, Justin works for uh, Fidelity Information Services uh, and we also have a few other announcements. So 11th of October we'll have uh, Malcolm Sherrington with us at either CT University Club or Level 39 speaking about fractals and finance. And 25th of October we'll have Mark Davis most probably at Marriott. <coughs> so hope you guys enjoy today and take care away Justin. All right. All right. Thank you, thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. Yeah, um, you know it's a it's a pleasure to uh, to uh, speak here. Um, usually I, I work from uh, Toronto, but I have a you know the the pleasure of visiting London uh, this week, so um, uh, I'm here. So um, so I've I have a ti title, you know, I said. There's always a bit of a disconnect when you are, you know, putting the slides together versus, you know, the time when you actually have to present it. And every time I look back, you know, it's, it's a, the title always looks very serious. You know, it's all, always very self-important. But um, really, um, um, what it really is is that you, you know we are we are a software company and uh, we we uh, develop um, software, you know, simulation engines um, that our clients at the bank uh, at the banks use. And um, uh, you know we're working on a uh, um, um, the AED technology, and where we think that we're using it to solve some uh, interesting problems. And I thought that um, it would be uh, something of interest to share with people. You know what it is, how it works, and if people will have feedbacks for us, that would be excellent. Um, so, um, what what is the, the 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 problem that you know we're trying to look at? Um, the the today's focus is something called initial margin. And what it what it really is is that um, the latest you know, you know, regulation basically mandates that um, uh, for for bilateral trading, you know, banks trading with 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 each other, uh, would have to start posting um, um, more collateral. And this collateral amount is basically um, uh, um, based on how much market risk um, um, that, that that you have on your portfolio. So it's, it's de de determined by um, the value at risk. Amount uh, based on your portfolio, and um, um, you know it's it's mandated that that the um, the VAR is supposed to be at a 99% confidence interval, and um, you know basically you would it's be able to uh, the collateral amount is able to withstand you know the changing market conditions, um, assuming that the market is in a distress uh, uh, situation, uh, at least you'll be able to cover the loss 99% of the time. Now. Um, if you are a bank that is less sophisticated, you know either you know be able to calculate this amount, which typically requires some form of modeling. Uh, if you're not able to do that, there is a schedule-based method as well. It's basically a lookup table. Depending on the type of instruments that you trade, you can calculate your your collateral amount off of it. Uh, so that's fairly um, a, a simple, and it's because of the, its simplicity, um, uh, it needs to be uh, pretty punitive, um, and in fact, to the point where you know in, in practice. Uh, most of the banks would be be going with 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 um, uh, the the initial margin, the the simula base, simulation based method. Now, um, so it's great that you know the regulations um, uh, mandate these kind of uh, uh, these these kind of uh, 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 collateral amount to exchange. Um, but you know, as, as we talked about before, this is something that needs to be modeled in general. You, you know, it's. it's, it's the, the, Generally, there's no assumption-free way of calculating that amount, and yet this is supposed to be a collateral amount, meaning that that if I tr do trading with you, then you and I would ha have to have some kind of agreement on what that collateral is supposed to be. Well, how how are we supposed to be able to reach that kind of agreement? Well, we're only able to do that if we do have, you know, do have a, a standardized way of calculating this, and this is where um, 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 ESTA stand up and and collaborate. Uh, with, with the global banks uh, to, to put together uh, uh, such a calculation and that's called the ESTA SIM, the standard initial margin model. And what it really is, it's a, it's a standardized ga delta gamma VAR. And so we're getting a little bit into the calculation a little bit. Um, but um, so if we're 
um, and, and this requirement comes in waves. So you know your your wave one you know banks tier one banks will have to uh, start exchanging this initial margin uh, starting last year. And your wave two then those will be September this year, and wave three will be next year September and so on. You know up to wave five. Um, and by then you know pretty much all the banks will be be, be caught by by this regulation. Now um, if you're a bank working on this problem, the first problem that you have to you know get, uh, uh, overcome is actually have to be able to calculate um, on this collateral amount at t equal to zero um, um, uh, because you know at the end of the every day I literally have to be able to you know exchange the collateral with, with you um, but 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 you know to be able to do that is really only uh, uh, to start uh, because I you know in general uh, we not only would like to know what that in that initial margin amount is today, but I'd like to know, you know, what my you know, initial mar margin requirement is tomorrow, the day after, and so on and so forth, right? Um, so, and just this sort of, you know, the bit of a landscape. Um, the problem of asking more and more collateral is to try to mitigate credit risk, and the way. You know, and 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 in 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 a, in a way, you can say that you know the more collateral I ask for, the less credit credit exposure I, I have. Because if you decide to default, then you know I at least have, I have more and more collateral to potentially can offset my my credit risk with. Uh, however, that that that's not that, that's not really a risk-free way of trying to solve the problem. Because you know, the more and more collateral that you try to ask for, um, there is a liquidity risk. Because again, at the end of the Day, I, I literally have to come with this cloud and, and, and exchange with you. So that, that's number one. Um, the, the second challenge is that this, this also creates a long-term funding cost as well, right? Because I, wh where do I get the, 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 this cloud from? I, I will either have to, you know, I have to fund it from somewhere and then and, and exchange with you, right? So, so, so I, I, in effect, uh, uh, this is this is in, in a way this is a kind of risk transfer. You lower, you know, you you potentially reduce your credit risk. But what you pay is you pay with a liquidity risk and and uh, funding risk. Now, so you know different ways of looking at this. You can look at it. You know the impact is is everywhere. Um, whether you are working in the funding world, looking at the liquidity world, um, um, or you are looking at credit risk, or you are calculating capital for your bank, um, this uh, um, um, all have a, a pretty big implications to you. Um, and and you know and, and even globally you know as a financial system you can ask whether that's actually um, um, uh, 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 the, the right thing to do whether you should exchange credit risk with liquidity and funding risk um, but 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 you know this talk is is um, not at such a high level it's not so you know, you know so important we're taking taking this requirement and this need um, um, as a given and we're, saying, we're trying to say well okay given the environment what is it the that, that we can forecast what this requirement this initial margin requirement is going to the future. Okay, so in general, we want to forward simulate initial margin under all these different circumstances, and how do we do that? Um, so the agenda is number one is where, where we're trying to look at exactly what is you know what, what is the initial uh, the challenge of simulating initial margin, what it is, and why is it not necessarily a trivial problem. Uh, the next one we're looking at um, uh, our AD platform, what it is and how does it work and how does it help with our problem. And the third one we thought you know, we'll close, clo uh, close up by, by looking at some of the you know, fun um, 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 example outputs that we can get out of, of, of this technology. So simulating initial margin, right? Um, so a little bit more detail in terms of what 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 the is that same calculation is so before we just have problem so first we'll look at the problem so um, as we said that you know it's basically a standardized delta gamma var what that really means is that uh, in order to calculate uh, the initial margin result I take a, a, a portfolio I have to calculate its its sensitivities so basically I'm, I'm asking well if the FX rates or my interest rates shift a little bit how does that affect my portfolio value and that would be the sensitivity. Obviously, the, the bigger that is, the bigger the risk I, I have, and therefore, uh, the more initial margin that I, I, I should put up. Okay, so, so you, you know, generally, the kind of sensitivities that you calculate is with respect to your FX rates, interest rates, or you know, your your your, your credit prices, equity, commodity, and so on. And you calculate all these sensitivities. That would be the input um, into the is that same. <coughs> You know, we can look at it. You know, that's the, it's that same box, 
and outcomes with the initial margin amount. Okay. Uh, within the, the, the is a scene box, what you, what you are going to find is, is a standardized delta gamma uh, uh, calculation, meaning that um, uh, as one of the, the, the parameters that, that it gives you is, is the volatility weights, right? Because not all sensitivities are created equal. Um, um, certain, you know, F, you know, um, um, you know uh, maybe emerging markets, you know, uh, FX rates are more volatile than, than, than you know, more established markets. Um, and therefore, you will get a bigger weight uh, for uh, correlations as well. But but these these parameters obviously is is, is quite important. But they are um, um, is it's 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 standardized by ISTA and it, it does get recalibrated once in a while. Uh, it's on a practically annual basis. But um, um, that recalibration is is on the shoulder of of ISTA. So on the on the well, ISTA coordinates it still. You know, global banks coordinate coordinated effort, but 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 the important piece here is on a day-to-day -day basis, um, we can imagine that this box is given to you. Uh, what we have to be able to feed in is uh, the portfolio uh, sensitivities into the box and outcomes and initial margin amount. Okay, so we just have to find the initial margin. Uh, so we just have to find the sensitivities and plug it into the box. Um, so why is this not um, a, a trivial problem? Well. If we would need to know um, uh, what my future amount is, I, I take a portfolio, I f determine what uh, what that portfolio is going to look like in two years' time. I calculate sensitivities. I put the sensitivities into the box. Um, I'm 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 done, right? So then I'll, without you know, box will outcome a number. Well, that's that's true to a certain extent, um, except um, you have a quite a bit of performance challenges. Um, if I want to calculate it same today, uh, potentially that can involve thousands of sensitivities. If you're know, look, looking at how, um, you know, I don't know, the, you know, the, the go, you know, how JP Morgan trades with uh, Goldman Sachs, for example, right? you know, can you imagine that that's uh, that depends on a lot of a lot of risk factors, um, and and you know, typically, you, you, you know, you know, the, the 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 portfolio is complex in such a way that 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 um, as closed form sensitivity does not necessarily exist. It's quite difficult to, to, to uh, try to derive every single one of them just for every single product. And, and therefore, um, um, the, the quote unquote standard approach is um, I have an engine that be able to calculate the portfolio value at the end of today. And if I want the sensitivities, I change the input a little bit and I, 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 I see how, does that, how that changes my price and whatever that change is, is my sensitivity, right? Um, so, you know, if I need to calculate thousands of sensitivities, that would require uh, me to be able to reprice the portfolio about a thousand times. Okay, I can do that maybe for today. Uh, but the kind of problems that, that these forward simulation will require, because the future is uncertain, and therefore, you know, a lot of these problems are done via Monte Carlo simulations, meaning I have to simulate thousands and thousands of scenarios all the way into the future. And it's not only for one single horizon either. I need to simulate for today, tomorrow, the day after, and all the way out to you know, 30 years. So, so even for, with a discretized Monte Carlo simulation, that can easily run for you know, the next 30 years easy. Right? So um, um, if, and, and these kind of uh, computation, you know, at, the end, at the end of the day already, is a, it's a heavy, heavy computation uh, already. So uh, people familiar with the bank, you know, these, are, these, are, these com kind of computations are similar, you know, typically found in things like the PFE simulation or the CVA simulation, uh, where the problem requires you to calculate one PV for every single simulation node. Now, if we need to calculate thousands of sensitivities for every single horizon, then we need to increase the computation time by a factor of a thousand. Right? You can start to see that that that, that these kind of problems uh, um, starts to become. Um, um, and if you just just do 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 the simple, you know, this the, the, this kind of strategy calculating sensitivities called bump and rerun um, is going to be too heavy. Okay, so. What is it that we we can do about it? Um, you know, it's 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 only worthwhile talking about a problem if, if there's actually a better way around, right? So, um, um, so AD stands for adjoint algorithmic differentiation. So that that's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, so what it is is it's 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 not 
an approximation. Um, um, in fact, um, uh, the, the, the result you get is basically the, 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 the true calculus derivatives. At least true, true, true to the sense that, that to the extent that you know, um, um, a computer's finite precision is able to produce for you. That is, and the way that it works is that if you, if you think about how how to differentiate a function, I mean, if I give you a function, you, you don't know always know how to integrate it, uh, but you can always n know how to differentiate it. So if I give you a calculation as a computer instruction. Um, um, you know, you can imagine that you can go through a line by line. Is okay. Let's say I'm calculating what, um, I can, you know, write out the storage is along the side. So, so you know, it's quite quite deterministic, right? Um, um, the challenge is if you need to do this manually, um, um, that's probably you know, it's it's hard to make sure it's right. It's probably you know full of bugs and it's going to increase your your development time by a, a huge factor, right? Um, so the trick is to train the computers do it itself. Um, so it's pretty cool to be able to to um, um, get the true calculus derivatives out, um, um, but what's really alluring, and especially you know that goes back to what we were discussing a little bit earlier, that the ch challenge is really performance, right? Um, um, I, if I want a thousand sensitivities, I don't want to spend a thousand times the effort. And what this, this technique is able to give you is that it's Probably as it's a constant factor, you know, it's five times or in practice about five to seven times of of performance where you're going to get all the sensitivities, and that's actually a key point. And 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 just let me make clear again: um, if I want one sensitivity out, the runtime is about the cost of five times. If I want ten sensitivities out, it's about the cost of five times. And if I want a thousand sensitivities out, it's about the cost of five times. Right. So this is where 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 the you know the you know you know the benefits comes in right um, there is a cost of course you know you know, the, you know the life is never that easy um, building a system <coughs> like this isn't necessarily that simple um, but it's worthwhile if your computation you know the the problem that you're looking at the simulation you're looking at is complex <coughs> in nature right and and you 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 do have a sensitivities in your bottleneck um, and then AD potentially is worth it. Um, a good example uh, of that is is um, banks um, have another simulation heavy based uh, uh, results called CVA, and 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 that to calculate the CVA number itself is a heavy uh, simulation, but it's also a price, and therefore it's worth asking the question: What is this price sensitivity? So it's underlying factors, and and. And, and, and that's that's uh, that's our first uh, uh, application. So before I talk about go, going through this, let me um, uh, show you a little bit. You know how you know give you a bit of intuition how this works, right? So suppose I, I have a, a, a series of calculation steps. You know it, I have an in, input x that goes through some transformation steps that could, becomes a you know an intermediate step u and v and y. Right, and then and then the input is you know x is a a, 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 a vector of a thousand elements, right? So maybe it's it's your interest rate curve of a thousand ten points on there, or or uh, or you you know, you, could, you know it could be anything else, right? So so you know just let's just take a look at a, 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 a simplified example, um, and and then you know the output y is a single number. Let's say it's your PV or it's your CV or, or, or whatever that, that you want to differentiate, and let's just take take it as simple that you know the the the, the, the first step the input has a thousand input, then immediately after that it gets compressed into a single number. Okay, let's maybe take it you know, easier to say that this, the first thing I do is take an average, and the second step is I square it, and the third time is I, 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 I you know, take the exponential function or something like that, right? So, so something really simple, okay, just for illustration purposes. Now, how do I calculate calculus chain rules? Well, the calculus chain rules, you know, it's, it's, <coughs> it's, uh, it's a, you know, derivative of y inverse, uh, you know, with respect to, to v, and then v with respect to u, and u with respect to x, and, and so on. So, so, and that is going to give me sensitivities of, of y with respect to x. Alright, okay. So in, in fact, I have to multiply these three matrices together, ma matrices in general, right? And and mathematically, it doesn't matter how I multiply these matrices, right? That in principle, I'm supposed to get the same answer, right? But computationally, there is a difference in in the order that I I multiply them, right? Because 
For example, if you look at this, the first matrix is about a thousand by one. The second matrix and third matrix are ma matrices, are scalars, right? Because they're one by one, right? So we're thinking about how do I multiply these things together? If I start from here, this is a thousand by one, I have to multiply every single element here by this single number, right? And I have to multiply every single element there by this single number again. Right? So it's a lot easier if I start from the back. If I, this is a scalar, this is a scalar. So why don't I multiply these numbers together first? And then I pull, multiply that number by the thousand elements in this, the, the first ma 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 matrix. Right? So that's a lot simpler to do. Right? Um, so as, as you can see, um, this technique um, uh, depends on the dimensions and depends on the number of inputs you have versus the outputs. Um, um, but you know, it turns out you know, a lot of if, if financial uh, problems you're looking at, usually you're looking at a single output, you know, it's a price of something. And, and, and this, but that's the, the complex derivative, the complex pricing that can involve thousands of inputs. So that's, that actually turns out to be the, 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 the appropriate uh, tool that, that we use. So the, the, the algorithmic differentiation you know, describes the fact that you know, we're differentiating things using the algorithm, using computer to do it. Um, the first A stands for adjoint, and, and this, is, this basically um, um, is talking about the technique of running the calculation backwards. And, Calculate, uh, uh, propagating the derivatives from the calculation output all the way uh, to the input. Uh, there's a sister technique it's called tangent algorithmic differentiation. It's to multiply the the sensitivity, the 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 the, the, uh, the these derivatives forward along the direction of the calculation, right? So um, that can be appropriate if you have much fewer input versus the the, the output that you have, which you know, which could come useful. Um, so just you know, think uh, just a little bit of the complexity. You know, so so you know, if you look at um, um, what people would call it a, a, a CVA simulation, is again, it's another simulation that would potentially run for for you know 30 years and gets eventually compressed into a number called CVA. What you would do is you would start from today's rates, today's market conditions, so today's FX rates, interest rates, and so on. You forward simulate that in time um, over the next 30 years. So that's your simulated scenarios. What you project what the market condition is going to be uh, for the next 30 years. You, you, you price your portfolios in each of these simulation nodes for every single scenario and, and time. And, and once you have the distribution of the portfolio values, then that, based on that, you derive a, a, a price called CVA. And if you want to differentiate, because, because the way that, that the AAD will work is we want to propagate the sensitivities all the way from CVA and then backwards, right? So the first thing, the first pass you have to do is you have to generate the CVA prices and, and you have to be able to remember the calculation tree like this. Because the next step, when I have to calculate sensitivities, I have to propagate them backwards. Essentially, basically, I'm reversing the flow of the calculation. So that is the complexity of, of building such, such a system, to be able to be able to do this. Run it forward in time, as the first pass and then run it backwards. Okay. Um, so uh, accuracy, what is it that, that we, you know, I know is, it, is, it, is it worth it? You know, how, how does it compare with, you know, st st standard approaches? Basically, I just change the calculation input, rerun the, my, my, my entire simulation and see, see what happens. Right? So there are two ways that I can do it. The most common way of uh, doing finite differences is either with one-sided finite difference or versus two-sided finite differences. Um, and we actually find that, um, and, and, and with the AAD, we actually find that they are actually generally very, very close. And in fact, um, um, if you run this practice, you actually typically find that the difference between one-sided versus two-sided can be bigger than two-sided versus versus you know the the AAD and and depending on your application um, 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 you know the kind of sensitivity that you AAD can potentially be more stable for, for example if you try to put the sensitivity results back into some kind of an optimization tool or something like that so this is just to prove out that you know a technique that, like that, that it works and it's possible to run it on a large scale um, um, simulation basis okay um, and, and further, um, in terms of performance, right? So if you use the bump and rerun, basically the finite difference approach, you know, if you want a thousand factors, then your runtime is just a factor of a thousand, right? Now, if you want two thousand, then it's a factor of two thousand, right? Now, it's not clear what where AD is basically basically hugging the x-axis, um, but if you blow up this graph, um, 
um, you know, it's just a finite cost between um, uh, uh, the, the amount of time that you generate the sensitivities versus um, um, the, you know, the time that you just have to get the original results. Okay. Um, um, so, so you know, first of all, um, you know, building something like this isn't isn't easy, um, and also there are further requirements. You know, if you run run a, a large mature system, so you know, some of the requirements you you want is that um, uh, you want AD will just work. Uh, you don't want to re-implement your 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 all your systems, all your simulation evaluation models, uh, uh, just because you want this technology. Um, also, you know, ideally. Um, you don't you know you you don't want to require every single one of your developers to to have to be an AD expert to be able to do that right you know um, um, there are other problems a lot of these these uh, um, 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 financial simulation models are what they call vectorized meaning that uh, you can get a lot of benefits instead of running one scenario at the time in your simulation you run a block of simulation at the time. To, uh, a, a, a block of scenario at a time as well. It's called vectorization, and and you know our approach to run AD itself is fully vectorized, meaning that it it, it doesn't it not only calculate sensitivities for one scenario at a time, but in fact it, ca it tracks sensitivities for a block of a scenario at a time. Um, um, as you can see from before, you know, have to remember all the calculation tree, and in fact I I in principle have to be able to remember all the intermediate results from the beginning to the end because only then I'll be able to propagate the sensitivities backwards. You can see that potentially this can be pretty uh, 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 heavy in terms of memory. Uh, there are, uh, there's something that I have to get around with. And also is uh, what happens if a function is not, is discontinuous, right? So how, is it, how, how do you smooth a function and enable a calculation like this? But one thing I want to highlight in terms of, 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 of what we're working on here is is the flexibility that you have to allow for, for forward sensitivities tracing. And what do I mean by that? Um, is that if I want to calculate the sensitivity of, uh, of a portfolio, uh, what I mean by my sensitivities in two years time, I don't mean the sensitivity of my portfolio value in two years with respect to today's prices. While Maybe that's something you can't calculate. That, that that's not very important to me. What what I'm interested in is what's my portfolio sensitivities with respect to the market condition in two years time, right? So my two years prices with respect to two years market condition as opposed to today's market condition, and that means is that that I have to, for example, simulate my FX rate up to some horizon t, and then based on the market conditions, I calculate a market price, but I have to differentiate this. This guy with respect to the FX rate at time t, not today's FX rate. That's that, that's just you know, financially that's not what I want. Um, so what does that mean to our calculation? If I want to calculate forward sensitivities, I have to start from today's rates as well. I have to sim generate my my scenarios. I have to generate my risk factors for scenarios, you know, all the way to to 30 years, and I start doing my pricing. So I get a portfolio values at a particular horizon. But then I have to start walking backwards because now this is my out output as far as my AD system is concerned. That is my output. And my input is my simulated market conditions. Right, so I have to go backwards. And at the end of this step, I have my sensitivities. And then I can take my sensitivities, fit into the ESDASIM box, and get all my sensitivities results out. So this is the, the additional flexibility that, that, that we will have to enable. Okay, so, um, um, you know, this is, this is a fun and talking about this really is its own talk, but I thought that, you know, at this point, it would be fun to uh, look at some of the results that we actually be able to get out of, out of a tool like this. Okay, so what does it mean? What does it look like we are able to, to do this simulation? Okay, so before we actually you know, look at the simulation engine, you know, we should start from a place that we can anchor ourselves. Now, I have two ways to calculate is that same, the initial margin amount. The first way of doing this is I use bump and run using finite differences to calculate all the sensitivities, fit into the same box, and get the initial margin amount out. Another way of doing it is calculate sensitivities using our AD tool, get a set of sensitivities out, and fit into the same box again. I get another initial margin. How different are they? They are actually pretty close. Um, if you're looking at linear instruments, 
or some of the option, you know, some of the nonlinear um, optionalities. You can look at you know the relative difference between the initial margin value that you get is typically quite quite small. Uh, you know, it's just a fraction of a percent really, and and you know if you if you, um, um, uh, you know, even though these tools are standardized and you know, the sensitivities are still different from, from each bank, in practice, um, uh, almost surely the difference between the, the, the initial margin amount that I calculate versus my counterpart uh, um, is going to be much bigger than this. And typically, you know, the market practice is if it's not too within some tolerance, then people just take the midpoint and move on, really. Right, so, so, you know, really, you know, you're gonna find differences in other places rather than just a sensitivity calculation method. Okay, so um, this tool is best, uh, you know, applied to calculate forward sensitivities. Um, the first uh, instrument, you know, the most common financial instrument is probably, perhaps is the interest rate swap. Um, so we take, a, take an interest rate swap and can be able to calculate. So this is the profile that, that, that you will get. Um, uh, so there are th three color lines on this graph. So, so um, the green line is the expected collateral amount. So potentially I simulate um, a thousand scenarios. <coughs> I, I have a forward collateral amount for each of the thousand scenarios that I do my simulation with, and I can calculate an expected amount based on the 1,000 simulations. I can also calculate the 5% and the 95% quantile of that distribution. It's just giving an idea about what the distribution of that looks like. And this is what that looks like. And, and as you know, I, and, and you can also clearly see that as a swap uh, uh, pays out of um, these cash flows, obviously risks start to reduce, so you, see, you can sort of step like gradual decrease over time. Uh, so you can take a swap that 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 uh, that matures over the the, the, the next ten years. Um, another thing, you know, for people who are are used to looking at these kind of results, um, you also find it surprising that these uh, these profiles actually look very very clean. Um, usually. You know, um, um, uh, financial institutions will at least run at least you know five thousand to ten thousand scenarios, um, because you know there's a lot of Monte Carlo noise. That, you know, you're trying to 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 get rid of them with a little bit more um, simulation counts. You actually don't need that many simulation counts with with this kind of brute force uh, approach. And the reason why that is is that is that um, um, uh, is that sim itself is what they called um, um, it's quasi static calculation meaning that that, that because it's it's um, it, um, the calculation itself is fairly standardized and fairly stable and once you put into the sensitivities of it um, 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 and this approach actually doesn't need uh, typically doesn't need that many scenarios to be able to converge which is another benefit um, um, there's other other interesting examples that, 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 that you, you, you can get get uh, get out get get at it. Uh, one another example is looking at is what happens if you have a well hedge book. By by well hedge, you know this is meant to represent a well hedge book. And and what that what that is is that you know you take a five year swap and take your a, 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 a ten year swap. You know one is one one pays uh, fix and the other you know receive fix rate. And we adjust. This is what what uh, we duration match the two swaps, meaning that that uh, um, um, that in, in a certain sense, you know, the ten-year swap carries more risk than the five-year swap. But I reduce the notion of the ten-year swap in such a way that uh, typically, if the interest rate parallel moves, um, 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 there is very little little risk left in the in the portfolio. But of course, um, um, you know, interest rate doesn't doesn't exactly parallel move and in fact each tenant point can potentially move in a correlated but independent way and and is that sim does capture that and so you know you can start to tell a story uh, from it so the first thing you can see is that it starts to begin you know at the beginning is it's better hedged you know so it started with a reasonably low number but over time over the next five years you, you know this you know uh, take, taking a five year swap to hedge a ten year swap journey is not really that good of an idea um, um, so so that you know the risk would gradually increase at the five year point that's where the, the peak and then the five year swap matures and that goes away and you're left with the original ten year swap which by then becomes a five year swap and and then that that, that slowly ages away. So we can see that this is a, the same profile as we, 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 we saw before. So that's sort of the, um, uh, the, the kind of a resource that, that, that you see. And also we can also see 
see that you know the opening balance is not not negligible because it's the same uh, treats this kind of basis risk uh, fairly conservatively. Um, another example, you know, fun to look at is is capturing path dependency in your portfolio. So if you take a swap option, which is an option to enter into a, a swap at uh, some future horizons. Now within the simulation, we we um, we we say that well, there are two ways of how this is going to go. Um, it, it starts at the, at the money swap. Um, ha, you know roughly half of the time it's going to end up in the money and therefore oh since it's in the money i'm going to exercise the option by then um, um, i literally you know have a swap on my hands or you know it could be ended up with the money you know the, the bet didn't go my way okay so i don't exercise it um, and then therefore it becomes nothing Right. And in this case, you know, we don't really know, you know, in the first case, we don't really know what the initial margin amount is supposed to be, but at least I know that it's the initial margin amount of a swap. We, we start to have develop a little more intuition what, the, what that looked like a little bit earlier. Um, but, you know, in the second case, I know what the initial margin is supposed to look like. It's zero, right? Because I've, I, I have nothing. Um, so and, and in fact that you know this is something that you know if you're not, not able to do a, a direct replication of, of the, the 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 initial margin requirement, it's actually quite difficult to capture, and yet we actually be able to capture uh, this behavior quite sharply. This is um, on the profile of my uh, my well, my distribution of what my collateral requirements looks like in the future. Um, you can see some very interesting features as well half of the time, this is 95% quantile, but basically it's half of, the scene, basically half of the scenario where I ended up with a swap, and therefore you can see that again the behavior here um, 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 is, is when I actually, you know, basically um, it looks like a swap that we saw before, and half of the scenario it ended up out of the money and therefore it's just dead at zero. And it's also very clear to see where the exercise day is. There's clearly a transition point between uh, uh, what it looks like on the left versus what it looks like on the right, right? So you know, so there's a, there's a, it's a it's a continuous but kinky transition between the two. It's recorded. Okay. Um, okay. Um, you know, I can I can talk about you know. Okay. So what what is it like to put two swaps? Um, um, together, um, and where you can see again, you know, you, you start to see again, you know, the, the, these uh, these uh, these inflection points, right? So, <coughs> and where you know, I can easily identify. Okay, that's my first swap chain exercise day, my second swap chain exercise day, and so on. Um, or you can look up what the three swap chain looks like, and you, know, you can start to see that these things start to get smoothed out more and more because there are more elements in the game. But you can still kind of see it. Um, there is. A, an instrument that roughly looks like, you know, a mixture of all these uh, these uh, different uh, 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 European options together, and that is a Bermudian uh, uh, swap option, which is instead of saying that okay, I have to exercise either on this day or I, on, on that day, um, uh, you have a set of days that you can potentially exercise you know, your options. Of course, there's a difference between the two, right? I mean, the Bermudian swap option is not like the same as a package of European swap option because you, know, you can only access one of the dates out of it, but, but you can still see, you know, so these kind of transitions is, all, is also smoother than what we saw previously as well, right? Um, that's also interesting uh, because, uh, because the pricing a Bermuda swap option is also more, 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 more complex than pricing a European option. Um, in general, the simulation, the, the pricing itself all, it also basically it requires a, con um, it's a tree-based valuation model. So, um, so, so as an interesting exercise of, of getting ADs to work with that type of valuation model. Um, instead of saying, well, okay, what is that we can, we can look at that, that um, um, uh, um, just be able to simulate you know, all the sensitivities. Um, um, uh, another way, you know, just the accuracy and the speed of, of, of using something like this is, is you know, hopefully is sort of um, 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 it is obvious, but but another interesting point also is the transparency because I am able to get portfolio sensitivity not only for today, but all for all future time steps and for all future scenarios as well. Um, so if I look at and, and in fact, for example, I can tell a story. If I take a ten-year swap, um, what is the most contributing sensitivity point? What well, the 10-year point because it's a 10-year swap, right? Um, but you know, 
if you look at the you know the sensitivities, how how it behaves over time. Well, a ten year swab slowly becomes a five year swab, becomes a three year swab, and four year swab, and so on, right? So, so the the most delta contribution for that portfolio, right, at the very beginning in time, it's the ten year the the ten year ten year point, right? And then slowly as as this portfolio ages, well, as this particular swab ages, now the contributing factor becomes the five year ten year point, and then the three year ten year point, two year ten year point, and so on and so forth, right? Now. Of course, this is pretty obvious that you probably don't need an AD system to be able to tell you that. Um, but, but um, um, you know, um, given a realistic, complex portfolio, uh, may, maybe it's not not so indeed obvious what how, how that's going to evolve over time. Um, but, but you know, so so um, having this kind of calculation is be able to be able to give you this kind of drill down to, to this understanding or you know, if you have an initial margin amount on some future horizon that looks a little bit strange to you, you'll be able to, to ask the question, hey, why, why is that the case? You know, what, what is my most in important sensitivity that contributes to, to the initial margin being this way, right? Um, 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 and, and further, you know, to, to, to another extent is that um, um, getting all the sensitivities out to be able to calculate um, um, numbers based on, based on initial margins based on this uh, is really only one application of force sensitivities, right? Because instead of the typical application where you price a, your portfolio on a particular horizon, getting all the sensitivities basically means I can tell you all the local possible local movements of, of this portfolio at that particular simulation node, right? So, so I think really um, 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 this is really only the beginning of, 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 of its potential. Um, how am I doing with the time? It's fine. It's uh, eight fifteen. Oh, okay. You can carry on. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So I thought that you know, well, what is that? What else is that we can do with with something like this? Um, there's actually a sister problem. Well, first of all, you know, the problem I think is just you know, this is just a really good tool, and I think it's generally applicable outside of this initial margin world. But but it turns out um, initial margins are only not required between bilateral banks, right, you know, between bank to bank. Um, it's also required between a bank and its central clearing counterparty. And, and you know, what is also interesting and, um, um, is that a lot of these, uh, these uh, central clearing counterparties, when you trade with them, they will ask for initial margin. Although it's slightly different because because in a bilateral world, I post initial margin to you and you post initial margin to me. In the CCP world, you post initial margin to CCP, CCP will not post initial margin back to you. So, so, so no, the love doesn't reciprocate, um, unfortunately. Um, but um, 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 but what, what's, what's similar to this problem is that um, 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 these CCP is typically the initial margin methods, while different across, you know, from different, you know, one CCP differs from one CCP yeah, to another. Um, and they're generally uh, also VAR based technique as well, and in, in fact, they are usually historical VAR, so it's a VAR derived on based on historical scenarios. So, so what is it that we can do then? Um, you know, so, you know, a complete replication is probably not practical. Um, it's not impossible, it's just not practical. Why is that? Well, number one is that, um, and it's not all details are known, and, and in fact, if you try to exactly replicate how CCP does, and they would, they're, not, they're probably not very happy about that. Um, 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 and also, you know, so, so, so it's a bit of an unknown as well. But also is that um, a lot of these calculations are, 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 are historically based, it's not the delta gamma base as well. So, so even if I have all the trace sensitivities, uh, running through all the historical uh, uh, scenarios can still be, be, be challenging. Not impossible, it just depends on whether people are willing to pay for that kind of computational cost. Um, further also is that um, each CCP has a lot of different uh, uh, idiosyncratic features, like the default funds and, and, and so on. So, so it's, it's, it, 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 it's hard to get all of those things correct. Um, 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 and so, but, but you know, okay, let's take a step, step back, back for a second. You know, exactly what we did with the that same simulation, what we did is that we, we are actually able to directly forward simulate a particular kind of VAR. Um, it's called the delta gamma VAR. Um, um, so, you know, while it's not exactly the same as a historical VAR, um, um, you know, in, 
in some ways, you know, you know, they, 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 you know, yeah, it's possible to 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 try to make them equivalent. Um, so how do we actually do that? Well, okay, so this is what a typical simulation would look like. You know, this this you know, you know, this 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 typical this particular tree uh, um, 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 is supposed to represent what a Monte Carlo simulation would look like. So you start with something that's completely known today, and you full project its uh, the market conditions for in time. And, and each little uh, blue triangle represents, uh, 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 for example, you know, pricing or calculating sensitivities. These are the the, the points in, in, in time that, that that you know for a future time horizons where you want to know where you know where your risk amount is or collateral amounts are. So, so 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 what we did, well, so what we did is that at the very at every single point or, uh, forward in time, we generate a set of portfolio sensitivities. We take the portfolio sensitivities, put them into the exact same box, and get the initial margin amount out, right? And and crucially, getting back to the to the original point, um, um, how how do we know what the what the volatilities or correlations we're supposed to use to calculate uh, 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 my 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 market risk? Well, um, Sim gave it to me, and and we we use that 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 that, that directly. Well. What do we do with CCP then? Um, uh, why can't we just use a different set of uh, of, of, of uh, correlation numbers? You know, instead of using the one that 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 is latest published by 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 ESA, we're going to cal calibrate those volatilities to uh, uh, to um, um, the particular data that that each CCP uses. Okay, so. Is this gonna fly? Well, we don't know. Well, let's take an example. I right? take LCH as an example. So this is one of the um, big clearing house here. Um, um, let's see how 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 Brexit is going to impact it. So that's a bit of unknown. But but for now, the, the, um, um, the, the probably the most important uh, one of the most important uh, CCPs. Um, so you know, how do we calculate um, 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 uh, initial margin? Uh, it's called LCH pairs. Um, and the calculation roughly looks like this. Uh, it takes a portfolio, it calculates its sensitivities, so the delta gamma sensitivities. Um, it, it, it produces a set of uh, uh, historical scenarios you know, based on the past you know, 2,500 days and calculates a, a, a VAR or expected shortfall. It basically calculates the market risk based on the historical scenarios, and then applies a whole bunch of adjustments. Right, you know, on top of that, you know, there is there is a there is a floor. Um, and there is a whole bunch of add-ons, uh, uh, multiplier, and so on. Okay, so let's look at the most important modeling piece right here. It's calculation of these expected shortfalls. Um, so what we do is, uh, you know, we can what we can do is we can take the the historical data. Um, instead of running historical simulation, it's we then we ask the question: Well, what's the equivalent, what well, is as much as possible, uh, uh, volatility parameters that we can fit into this uh, sim, and, and to calculate initial margin amounts, and and actually you, you know we can actually you know get you know pretty close, right? You know, so um, let's run the experiment to find out how close we can get. And actually, you know, without not too much effort, um, when we take a portfolio of interest rate swaps, um, um, you know, that that's vanilla. Um, that that's true. Although these trades are going through essential clearing are typically on the vanilla side, so that that, that shouldn't be a concern. Um, so I can I, now I have two ways I can calculate my CCP initial margin. One way I can is I can literally do. Um, uh, the methodology that the, the, the LCH is running. I, I run a historical VAR simulation and calculate expected shortfall, and I get a number. Right? Another way of doing this is we can use um, um, this kind of calibration technique and, 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 and using the delta gamma approximation and get, get an individual margin out. Actually, you do it pretty close. Um, 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 and this hasn't been optimized in any, you know, in, in a serious way, but you know, as it stands, you know, it's about about a couple of percentage points you know, in terms of relative difference. Um, uh, so so you know, um, the thinking and the intention is that, well, we can do this, then we can, you know, using the same same technique and the same framework and the same calculation to forward project future initial margin amounts. Okay. So in conclusions, um, um, so 
um, um, you know, for simulation of, of, you know, so just a couple of points that I want to, to leave you with is the simulating initial margin is, is important because initial margin um, plays a crucial role, especially changing, you know, the, the way that, you know, the, you know, the, the capital markets works um, 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 in the past and, and, and in the future in terms of transforming um, 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 credit risk into uh, liquidity and funding risk. And to be able to manage uh, this particular piece, this initial margin, is, is an important part. Um, I mean, the funding, capital, and, 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 and your risk. Um, now, if we need to forward simulate this, um, um, you know, using AAD to, to uh, forward project, uh, forward simulate sensitivities, um, 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 is, is a pretty, it's a, it's a pretty powerful method to, to do it. Um, just, a, just speed and accuracy probably is the, the obvious points, but, but transparency as well. And uh, something like this um, um, doesn't, you know, you know, applying to is the same uh, model is probably the obvious point, but CCP initial margin as well. And, and uh, you know, hopefully, um, and you can, you can see that, 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 you know, really if you have um, the forward sensitivities, you know, the, like, there are a lot more cool, exciting things that, that we can potentially think, you know, to do with it. So that is it. Uh, thank you. Any questions? Uh, yeah, sorry, one very basic question. Um, if I have a trade with you um, and uh, you pay me an initial margin and I pay you an initial margin, don't they cancel out? Yeah, that's a that's a that's a very good question. So so um, uh, typically no. So the way that it works is that so um, um, probably it's not a lot of mit risk mitigation if we just exchange numbers and and then we we'll both walk away with basically the same thing, right? So 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 they, um, if I post initial margin, usually it's posed to a third party, so the custo a custodian bank, and you also post it to a custodian bank as well. So if you default, then Custodian bank would then give me the initial margin and, and, and vice versa. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Then I'll ask a question. Hmm. Um, so, maybe a slightly off topic question. Um, has this been applied in, uh, for in the P, me P measure world in backtesting, for example? So, is it possible or feasible to use? Um, um, AAD to, for example, find out the sensitivity of my PNL because it's simulated PNL, right? Uh, to say some parameter value, is it is it straightforward, or is it does it require a lot of thought or not, or is it still kind of quite transparent because it just do do, do you see what I mean, right? You. I simulate a trading strategy. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm, so nothing mm -hmm. complex. I don't have any swaps. I'm buying and selling. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Um, and then my trading strategy has some yeah. parameters. Yeah. Theta. Can I use sort of the sharp ratio? Can I basically find out? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Uh, one good thing about sensitivities is that is that um, um, it's 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 measured independent. It doesn't matter whether you're a P or Q. It depends on on whether you are you are a your uh, portfolio state, whether it's simulated or or real world, it, it realized is it realistic or not. But given the market state, the sensitivity is, is, is measure independent, right? And in fact, um, um, I've seen some somebody um, uh, and did that. That is called uh, uh, hedge back testing. Hedge back testing. Yes. Yeah. So it's ba basically basically you know um, a, a lot of the. A lot of these uh, pricing models is based on the assumption that that uh, uh, it's it's supposed to be uh, arbitrage free, and the delta risk is supposed to be hedgeable, right? So that the, the whole replication argument, right? But you can have a realistic model and less realistic model, right? So and and the more realistic models were 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 you, know, you do this replication strategy it's supposed to work better than, than others, right? So this is that's the concept of, of a hedge back testing, is how well that, that, that stands up, right? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I think that, that outside of that's applicable outside of uh, derivatives market as well, just you know, hedge funds and pricing strategy as well. The same concept. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so um, the uh, algorithms that you're using um, are the 
is algorithm publicly available or are they proprietary to your company and the big secret? Oh, um, um, uh, the, the AED's algorithm. Um, I think the implementation is proprietary to, to us. Um, 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 but, the, but the algorithm is, is, is not. I mean, the, the algorithm of, of AD itself um, is, is, is publicly you know, available, right? But I think the, 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 the challenge of implementing something like this is, is, uh, is, 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 is programming design. Mm -hmm. Basically, right? You know, how do you, how how best to track the sensitivity calculations automatically, yeah. right? So, yeah. Any other questions? Just one thing. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned earlier about the cost of the sensitivities being four to five times. Does that hold for the higher order sensitivities as well? Um, so 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 luckily, you know. So right now, you know our. You know, our, our system only generates uh, first-order sensitivities, and, and that, 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 that is five times. Um, the higher-order sensitivities it depends on the, uh, how, how high order. Generally, it's more expensive, and, and depends on what kind you want. It, you know, it, it can grow. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Any other questions? No? In that case, um, thank you very much, Justin. Really, yeah. really nice, very, very interesting. Yeah. Thank you for having me. And, um, I just wanted to um, reiterate um, what Ed said. Um, we have quite a few exciting events coming up, uh, so stay tuned and uh, look forward to seeing you in the near future. Thank you very much. Yeah. And please join us, and hopefully, the, the speaker at the bar. Um, if you have Home any further bar. questions that you forgot okay. to, to, to answer, the bar is just downstairs. Okay. Actually, we are downstairs today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I have to return all the gadgets. <coughs> there.